Hello my soccer universe, what a wild way to end match the one at Euro 2024. First off, we had the wildest and probably the best game of the tournament so far, end to end stuff, up and down, so much drama. We had as many goals as we had shots uh, hitting the woodwork almost. We had of course wide range goals there as well. It was just brilliant what was happening in Dortmund. And then we had in Leipzig, maybe the game at first was a little bit of a letdown because the Czechs had more of a defensive outlook towards the game against the Portuguese. But in the end we got late drama and some late contention as well that probably did not get as much focus in the media. Sadly, Jersey Bingo, I did not get what I wanted. Turkey played in red, Georgia in white. And that despite Turkey having released a white home jersey. Turkey never did it already for last years. Turkey seemed to be never playing in white when they have the choice. And this is what I wanted to see. I mean, I felt that Turkey will of course play in red. It would have been so much more fun if Turkey would have chosen their white jerseys. And then Georgia go with the black ones. That's what I wanted to say. This is what I put down. So too wrong for me. In any case, the other one was a little bit more straightforward, Portugal in red and the Czech Republic in white. And before we go into the games, I also want to mention Jersey related. It's an upside down world at the Euros, especially if you're used to, for instance, the Westfalen Stadion or the uh, Allianz Arena in Munich to have certain colors. Yesterday we had the Gelbe Wand in red and white because of all the Turkish fans. And just the day before we had Romania Ukraine make the stadium in Munich all in yellow completely upside down. Add to that that the Italian fans were also on the main stand in Dortmund in blue and it just did not look right at all. But hey, that's the yours for you. There are new colors in established stadiums. Let's go. Turkey, Georgia. What a mad game. And, and actually the weather was the maddest of it all. Downpour. I mean, there were waterfalls coming down from the roof and then they had to put the water away. It was actually quite amazing that they still could play the game, but the game went ahead at what a game it was. I have to say there was a little bit of a crying eye for me because this could have been Turkey against Greece, which would have added a lot of emotion. But you know, this game was not short on emotions. It was the first game for Georgia. It was Turkey that more or less three quarters of the West Farstad was Turkish. So a lot of noise and a lot of emotion there. And it was on the field, it was on the stands, it was literally everywhere. The only thing I did not like and UEFA did not do a good job filtering that one is the Georgian anthem was booed by the Turkish fans bar none and I don't know why this is again a thing it started after Corona we had it all sorted out now we get all the booing again I hate it it's just not respectful in any way and as I said the game up and down stuff left and right first Turkey was much better Created many chances, even hit the post where the ball went almost parallel, almost parallel to the line. And out uh, had a few other good chances. And just at that point, when you really had the feeling that Turkey will go, then Georgia themselves got into the game. And what made this game so enthralling is that both uh, teams went forward. And even though Georgia in qualification was more known as a defensive side, they went all out in this one. They literally went all out. The only thing is that their star player was probably the one player they went a teeny bit missing. And I don't want to say that he went missing because Turkey knew exactly that they have to take care of Kvitschak Vyatskelia. But that opened up for every other player on the Georgian side. That was really, really interesting to see, I gotta say. And went for it, they did. However, the first goal came then to Turkey and it was right at a point where the game was kind of level. Uh, it was a cross in that is cleared right to Mert Müldür. He was born actually in Vienna. And he just volleys it out of the air into the net. A wonderfully brilliant goal. I don't know if it's better than the one for Sancho. Uh, I think the build-up for Sancho was maybe a little bit better. But it was a really, really well taken goal. And then just a minute later, Yildi seemingly had made it 2-0. However, Toe was offside, more, more or less. If this is 2-0, this is going to be a route for Georgia. But that kept Georgia in the game. And then you, you could see the real frailty of Turkey. That's the defense. Where they were absolutely passive. And Georgia could pass themselves into the defense. Although they had only three players in the box. But Miko Tadze puts it into the internet. And even the goalie did not look well on that one. It's 1-1. One, one, and then again... You could not tell, is he, who is this going now for? In which direction is this game going? Because it continued this way. Georgia was the pushing. Then Turkey had some late chances. It was really 
absolutely enthralling. This was wild. This was absolutely wild. This was not European in, in a way. This was definitely a game from a different continent. Let's put it that way. And that we had an Argentinian referee probably fitted that one because it was so open. Second half, again, Turkey a little bit better. There was a great free kick by Cialanoglu, the, the goalkeeper padded away. And so this pressure point of Turkey then actually was released when Arda Güler unleashes a shot in the 65th minute that curls right into the net. And yes, on TV, uh, we had a goalkeeper as an uh, expert. He said, well, there was a wrong step taken by Mamadashvili and that's why he, he cannot get there because there was a whole lot of space and a goalie as tall as Mamadashvili should actually get there was not to be but it was still a brilliant goal by Arda Güler another a long shot another wonderful goal absolutely great stuff and you thought maybe Turkey is taking control no Georgia had so many chances I mean the best one they hit once on the crossbar when there was one on one with the goalie and lay down they got desperation in they threw everything at Turkey there was a free kick that landed then on on the post and then the rebound was saved off the line in the end even Mamadashvili is coming up front meaning they leave themselves open and I understand Georgia really wanna go for this point that they would have deserved however then there's a, a one-on-one and Aktukoglu can run onto an empty net and also outside of the box a shot and it's 3-1 Turkey who get their win. Uh, if we look at the stats, just look at the expected goals. 2.48 to 2.03. 22 shots versus 15 shots. It just tells you a story. I think maybe Turkey was a slightly better team. And we can expect a whole lot of Turkey. I would expect a lot more goals when Turkey are playing. Because on the back, they are so open. Absolutely wild. But it was brilliant to watch. Loved that one in every aspect. Over in Leipzig, with also a game played in rain, it was not as great because the Czechs were defensively solid and Portugal had a really weird setup with, you know, two in midfield. The Czechs crowded the midfield so they couldn't really get through there. Then you had everyone drifting, like Jean Conzelo could actually pick out where he wanted to be, Rafa Leao was picking out where he wanted to be, and uh, Cristiano Ronaldo, yeah, I mean, he was mostly in the box, but also sometimes drifting uh, wide it was weird what Portugal was doing they had of course control of possession most of the time because the Czechs were just hitting deep and waiting for counter-attacks and when they did they actually were quite dangerous I think the Czechs put in a really good performance despite Portugal being bad and the first half there was not much I mean there was a cross in that Rafa Leao just missed and Bruno Fernandes sends once Ronaldo but this would have been an offside there was also a semi chance I think for Patrick Schick but you know not much happening it was actually a little bit dis disappointing I felt that the verticality for Portugal was very much missing second half it was much better especially once Diogo Jota came on for Rafa Leao who you know also got a yellow card for faking it and again this was a typically Rafa Leao performance the Milan fan I know he can be absolutely brilliant but most of the time he just looks not up for it and this was exactly what we saw here as well however when Diogo Jota came on I think it added a little bit more of an element up front however this came already after the first attack by Jax I mean Portugal created quite some chances and uh, made quite some pressure early on in the second half and then on the first count contact, Sufal plays it over to Provot, who takes an outside of the box shot. Again, wonderfully curled into the net, and the Czechs lead 1 0. And it's right in front of their fans. And I thought, yeah, they had the better match plan in there. Portugal still looked too wild. They, Portugal have all the talent, but it's a team that didn't work well, whereas the Czechs did. And I really thought they might see this out. However, it was not to be because of defensive errors. It was a shot that the goalie parries instead of catches and it goes right onto Hranac's shin and into the internet. It was a weird own goal. It's 1-1 and it was just seven minutes after Provot gave the Czechs the lead. There was, seemed to be a late winner for Portugal, but it was an offside in the build-up. So that was chalked off. And may I just say, I don't want Ronaldo to score in this one because he would take away the record for Austrian Ivica Vastic, who was at the time a Lask player. So this is really a record that is very near and dear to my heart, but I can only see Portugal breaking that record sometime soon. And just when you thought the Czechs had done enough, there was a really contentious scene uh, late on when a Portuguese player body checked a Czech player on the line, a clear foul. I mean, it's just shoulder to the head. There's no ball any, anywhere, but uh, referee Guida doesn't give a foul. And out of that same situation, 
Portugal that launches a counter-attack and scores the winner. And what a crazy winner it was. It was a cross-in that got deflected and then again Ranac cannot get his legs sorted. He tries to uh, save it somehow. It goes through his legs. The ball is lying freely there. And uh, Conceição, who just had come on, taps it home. And it's a late win for Portugal. A lot of drama, but a lot of heartbreak for the Czechs as well. I really felt with them because I thought that they would have well deserved a point out of this one. So we didn't learn much about Portugal. I mean, Roberto Martinez has so much at his disposal that he doesn't know how to pull it on the field and work it out. And that's not a good sign. Uh, if you look at the overall projections after these results, Portugal, Turkey, Czech Republic, Georgia remain more or less the same. With, with of course, uh, Portugal and Turkey with the win having a good chance of progressing. The Czechs will just about stay in the top four in the third place team. So we had no chance changes to the bracket whatsoever. That has not happened in a while, but you know, it might all change relatively soon. Today we have three matches. It starts actually with Croatia against Albania. I also expect this to be kind of a emotional one in a way. Then Germany, Hungary, I expect goals in that one. And Scotland better get something against the Swiss. But you know, I have the feeling in Group A, Germany and Switzerland will get the two wins and seal their passage on to the next round. That's kind of the feeling I get from that. Any case, please let me know what you thought about the game today. Give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video. Subscribe to my channel if you want to see more. I'll talk to you soon about more things in my soccer universe. Bye! Hey there! I really hope you enjoyed this video. And if you did, here are some videos and playlists that you may enjoy too. Also, please consider subscribing to my channel and hit the little bell icon so you get notified whenever something happens in my soccer universe. And with that, have a wonderful day! Bye!